you've identified about a half dozen stocks that have not performed particularly well this year. Some are up, uh, several are down, uh, like Disney, Fiserv, and Visa. Um, what were their problems uh, this year, and why do you think that this group are now poised to turn around next year? What will the catalyst be? I realize they're probably individual to each company. Yeah, they are individual to each company, but it's an important question. And I think one of the themes that you can that cut across all of them is that the businesses have done quite well this year, but the stocks have underperformed the market on a relative basis. In some cases, we're seeing negative returns, Disney being the most notable, down 15 percent, while Amazon and, uh, and Starbucks are up uh, close to 8 percent. But I think what we're seeing across these companies are unique concerns in different ways, whether it's Starbucks and you know the, the concerns since the spring around cost inflation, growth in China, supply chain concerns, whether it's the established uh, fintech players like Visa, Fiserv, and PayPal that have been running up against Wall Street wringing their hands over emerging fintech like Affirm and Afterpay and Square. These have all had some overhangs on the businesses that have lowered expectations for growth rates. But we think these are still businesses you can own in stocks that will play catch up over the next year or two as some of those concerns roll off and the businesses do fine. So let's pick the, a couple of uh, these companies apart and, and zero in on what you think may turn in their favor next year. Let's start with Disney. I assume that Part of the thesis would be that worries over uh, virus variants is going to recede and companies are going to, people are going to come back to the parks. Yeah, that's right, Tyler. So I think the uh, concerns over Omicron and another economic shutdown are certainly overdone. We've seen news that has corroborated that. So uh, Disney is underappreciated on Wall Street. It's underowned. Um, we need to look at the stock since March and, and, and look at the prior months to that, actually, the five months going into March. The stock had gone up 75 percent once we got early news that vaccines were going to work last fall. And then we saw that amazing growth in their direct-to-consumer channel with regards to Disney+. Plus. That pushed the stock up dramatically real quickly. And we've had some consolidation since then, in part because we've seen a rolling wave of Delta infections and then concerns over Omicron. As we get into 2022, we expect people to come out in early Earnest, and we think the parks uh, will overperform the streets estimates. And we think there's a nice move up in the stock based on a stable Disney Plus business and a growing parks and resorts business. Let's look at Starbucks. Here, there are a couple of things. One would be commodity costs. The right price of coffee has gone up. I assume they've right. passed much of that through to their cust customers. Uh, and there's also China, which is a, a questionable uh, area, I suppose, for any company these days. What do you see being the catalyst there that could turn Starbucks uh, uh, upward more? And, and today, of course, we're seeing uh, labor activ activism in Buffalo and elsewhere. Right. Uh, two things that we like about Starbucks as we look at over the next year or so. One is, as you noted, they are raising prices across the menu. And given their brand loyalty, we believe those price increases will be sticky. Meanwhile, our expectation is that the cost inflation abates in 2022 and beyond. And, and that will result in uh, margins being driven higher for Starbucks. Meanwhile, it's still an economic reopening story. And it's a market share story. Unfortunately, there have been a number of small businesses that have closed in the coffee arena during the pandemic. And Starbucks has picked up a lot of incremental traffic as a result of that. So Starbucks is still a strong consumer growth story. It's only up 8% this year. And when you value it relative to, say, McDonald's, which we think is a nice, reasonable comparison, it actually has a $60 billion lower market cap, but they do $7 billion a year in higher sales. And those sales have doubled over the last decade while McDonald's has stagnated. So we think it's a nice relative value play, a high-quality consumer growth story within that space.